thousands of years ago when Inuit were the only people living on the land, the sea was free of creatures. At that time lived a happy young Inuk girl named Sedna, who had everything a child could ever want for. Her father was the best hunter, and so they always had an abundance of cozy furs and lots of delicious meat to share. When Sedna's father decided it was time for her to get married and leave home, Sedna refused. Leave the comfort of home, the love and security her father gave her? Why would she do that? Sedna was very beautiful and she had many proposals, but she turned down every man her father suggested. These were excellent hunters, smart, healthy men but nobody was good enough for Sedna. Then came the stranger. He spoke seductively to Sedna about his beautiful home nearby, and he asked her to go there and make a life together. He talked of the animals he killed, their skins that kept him warm, their meat that filled his belly. He talked and talked all the while hiding his face beneath his dark hood. He promised Sedna a life of luxury. Sedna was smitten, but her father begged her not to go. He did not trust that this stranger would take proper care of his daughter. But Sedna had made up her mind. She followed the stranger out of the community, excited to start her new life. The stranger led her far away to a rocky island, and he finally revealed his face to her. He was not a man, but a raven, and he screeched with laughter when Sedna recoiled from his pointed face. He lied about everything. There was no shelter. Sedna slept on the cold, slimy rocks, exposed to the biting wind. All the raven fed her was raw fish every day. He couldn't catch anything else. He took off with his bird friends, leaving Sedna on her own most of the time. Sedna was so lonely and full of regret. She cried, wishing her father could come save her. Back home, Sedna's father wondered how she was doing, and so off he went in his kayak. He searched and searched, and when he came upon the dreary rocky island, he could not believe that this was where his precious daughter was living, and in such distress. Sedna wept with relief when she saw her father, and she climbed into his kayak. Her father began to paddle away but the raven noticed them trying to escape, and he was so furious, he flapped his great wings so hard and fast, it caused a storm on the water. The kayak was tossed through the rough waves, and Sedna and her father were so scared. Sedna's father thought if he released Sedna, then maybe the raven would let him live. And so he pushed Sedna into the water. But Sedna clung on to the side of the kayak in desperation. Her father, terrified of drowning, took his knife and sliced off Sedna's fingers. She slid into the frigid water and sank to the bottom. Her fingers took the form of seals, narwhals, walruses, and whales. Sedna held dominion over all these sea creatures. She was the ruler of the underworld, her head and torso like the woman she had been on land, but now with the tail of a fish. Her long, wild hair swirled around her. Without fingers, she couldn't comb out the tangles, and so the sea creatures got trapped in her wild hair. The people on the land were starving. And so one day a shaman, a powerful healer from the community, dove down to find Sedna. He told her what was happening to the people. He sang to her. 
he combed and braided her wild matted locks. Sedna was appeased by his gentle touch and his soothing voice, and so she released the sea creatures for the people to hunt. From then on, Inuit always make an offering of their catch to Sedna to thank her. They share their bounty, leaving nothing to waste. If this is overlooked, Sedna once again withholds the creatures from the hunt until a shaman dives deep, deep down to once again make peace with Sedna, goddess of the sea.